Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Very important news coming out this evening about Greece. The banks will be closed all next week and the stock market will be closed all next week. So we've got a bank holiday in Greece. We're looking at the opening of the markets, 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can see a big gap down here in the euro a gap down from about 1.117 to 1.09. You can see that the plunge protection team has come in very rapidly and they're starting to rally it. So it's gonna be very interesting to watch and see what happens here. Let's look at some other currencies. The US dollar Japanese yen took a big hit. That's very interesting to see because the yen is now strengthening if we go out to the daily chart. It's not really that significant, but we had uh, what I thought was the top actually put a short on around in here when we had this spike top and they started to rally. You can see now we're starting to drop, but the plunge protection team is involved here as well. Now, gold and silver. The initial reaction in gold was very bullish. You can see not that large of a move percentage wise. You can see that with the opening, we went from about 1175 up to about 1188. And now their plunge protection team are selling it off. We'll see how this works out. Silver was late to react. Silver also got a spike and you can see it's coming back down. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see how these markets shake out. Um, as I'm going to show you later, this situation is coming to the rest of Europe. It's also coming to the United States. Actually, the fundamental economic facts are much, much worse in the United States than they are in any of these countries. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that and show you why I'm saying that. Uh, but let's go and look at the latest article on Zero Hedge. Uh, this is the communist prime minister, Cyprus, and his communist uh, uh, finance minister. Um, and you can see here, he just gave a speech. At, uh, this is something that you just, you can't make this stuff up. Just a few hours ago, Greek prime minister Cyprus addressed his nation imploring them, I guess he meant them, to remain calm. That's right, he used the term remain calm. So let's get a live feed from Greece because that's just, uh, I have to, I have to show you that one, that's a classic, to remain calm. So that's what's going on in Greece right now. You can see, here's the pictures. And as the commentators have pointed out in the comments, who hasn't gotten their money out of Greek banks yet? Can you believe that there are still people who haven't gotten their money out of Greek banks? One of the commentators said, uh, well, maybe the Greeks are like the Americans. They just don't have any savings. Maybe they're just taking out tomorrow's money. So it's just absolutely insane. We knew this was coming. We have a bank holiday. We don't know what's going to happen, what they're going to decide. But let me take you back to a video that I did three years ago on the Greek crisis. And let's listen to what I said back then, and then we'll talk about the solutions. So whatever the supposed benefits of these bailouts that Greece has been receiving uh, are, they don't seem to be indicated in any of these charts. And my guess is that these numbers are just going to get worse. Uh, it probably would have been better for Greece, and I've been saying this for a long time now, that it, Greece just repudiates their debts and leaves the euro and uh, goes back to the drachma. Uh, completely repudiates debts, uh, just let all the bankrupt entities go under uh, and begin to restore industry there, which would, could be incredible tourism because a new drachma would be 
a very very cheap relatively to the euro and the dollar etc and uh, you could do something about that horrendous nearing 25 percent unemployment rate so I think that today was probably a bad outcome for Greece it would have been better to just repudiate the euro and leave which I think is going to happen anyway ultimately but unfortunately it's just going to be more pain in the long run so so that was my take back in 2012 now I said the same thing in the beginning of this year when Greece elected communists the communists Cyprus and Verifacus and I made a comment at that time, I made comments on Zero Hedge, I made comments all over the place, talking about how Greece cannot afford to leave the Euro. And the reason why is they are dependent upon outside money. Now, you would think about, it would make sense for them to just simply leave the Euro. I'm going to show you an analogy to America here with our debt. But if you think about their debt, as I said in 2012, the best outcome could have been for them to just simply declare the debt null and void. The new term that's going around is called odious, and there's definitely some argument to be made there. Uh, that's what Iceland did. And if you look at the involvement with Goldman Sachs and the fraud that was committed getting Greece into the euro in the first place, uh, you could definitely argue that the debt is odious. And if the debt is odious, it should be repudiated. The Greek people should not be responsible for the debt. They should be able to repudiate the debt. And they should be able to go back to the drachma. And things could get much better from here. Why isn't that happening? Why can't that happen? The reason that can't happen is because they are a socialist slash communist nation. And there are too many people feeding at the public trough. Now, I've already shown you the math on this with Greece. That even if Greece completely repudiated all of their debts, that means they have no interest payments on the debts, whatever the rates are. But they just have their tax revenues and they have their government outlays. They would be right back into the same hole because they have too many people feeding at the public trough. Now, that's the same situation that the United States is in. In fact, I will argue that we're in a much, much worse situation. This is the $18 trillion of debt that the United States has. Now, you can see I always do the one year of the latest figures that the debt to the penny has reported and then going back a year before that, you can see that goes back to the 25th of June of 2014. But what is interesting here is you can see that about the date of February to March 1st, roughly in this time here, uh, the end of February, the beginning of March, you can see we've got this mysterious number of 18152. Do you see that? 18152. So, the debt is not increasing. It's not because the debt is not increasing that this number isn't going up. The debt is increasing. They're simply not reporting it. We no longer have a debt ceiling. It was suspended and they're just reporting it frozen as they're draining other funds, which those funds don't exist. It's a complete fraud. Now, let me show you how the United States is in the same exact situation that Greece is. This is the debt, $18 trillion. Now, the amount of money that we take in in taxes is roughly $2.5 trillion. The amount that we outlay is three to $3.5 trillion. These are very, very rough numbers. Don't quote me on these because no one knows what the numbers really are. They're not reporting the real numbers anymore. But we're still running about an five to $800 billion yearly deficit, which is adding on to this debt. And you can see they're not reporting it anymore. They're just leaving it frozen at the last number they had. Now, let's compare this and think about the interest rates and think about what this would be if this were Greece. So we know that Greece is on 
the brink of default. They have a bank holiday. We're not going to have banks open next week. We're not going to have the stock market open next week. And let's imagine if this happened here. So we have $18 trillion in debt and an honest interest rate it, with the fiscal situation we're really in would probably be about 10%. Uh, we actually had 20% interest rates back in uh, 1980. Uh, but I would say that an honest interest rate would be 10%. But just for sake of argument, let's say it's 5%. So 5% interest rate on this debt is going to be $500 billion a year just in interest. Now, we know that they have zeroed out interest rates, so they're basically paying nothing but we'll say they're paying 100 billion or so. So that's gonna be another 400 billion added on to the budget deficit that we currently have. And that's gonna put us at a trillion or higher. So let's imagine that the United States would do something like what I suggested Greece should do, which is just completely repudiate, repudiate the odious debt. And that would be this 18 trillion for the United States. So let's imagine that we repudiated this debt and it went to zero. That We don't care what the interest rate is because we're not paying any interest because we have no debt. So we're back to square one. We've repudiated the debt. We're not even going to think about what the repercussions would be for doing that, but let's just imagine that we're back at zero debt. Now, we would still have outlays of roughly 3.3 to 3.5 trillion, and we'd still only have tax revenues of about 2.5 or so trillion. Now, let's imagine that the interest rate was a reasonable interest rate that we were paying, which we aren't. So we'll take 300 billion off of that and say that we're, our outlays are around 3 trillion. We're taking in 2.5 trillion. That would be the most rosy scenario we could come up with. So even after a debt repudiation, we go right back to $500 billion deficits and the debt starts right back up again. So you can see that the United States is in the exact same situation that Greece is. Greece can't repudiate their debt because they can't afford to. They, they literally cannot afford to pay for their services that, they're, that they have right now just based on their current budget with no debt payments. So this is a situation that all the Western governments are in and I want to read you this article from uh, Jim Sinclair's Mindset. This is Bill Holter, and he's now over, uh, I don't know if you guys heard, he's now over at uh, Jim Sinclair. And this is fantastic. This is talking about silver. And this is very important because this is the first time I've seen somebody besides myself or the Jason Hommel or SGT or Chris Duane or some of the real silver conspiracy people, but not really mainstream. Not saying that Bill Holter is mainstream, but he's more mainstream than the rest of us are. So to see somebody who's semi-mainstream to make this point that silver is the absolute Achilles heel of this entire system, uh, uh, this is fantastic. So we're gonna read this whole thing. This coming week, could be very telling. China just ended a disastrous week and finished just whiskers away from entering a bear market, negative 20% territory. Credit markets all over the world are weakening and yields are rising. Greece will not make their June 30th payment and probably go through a referendum to decide whether or not to flip their creditors the bird in a meaningless vote. In fact, Greece will probably go boom this week. That was very prescient. Their banks and stock markets may not open Monday morning Two days later, some sort of plan will need to be concocted to classify their bankruptcy as not a default. Otherwise, $3 trillion fused to a $1.4 quadrillion bomb will be lit. These and more will be very important midterm XR exams. Any failure will bleed over into derivatives and become final and terminal exams with zero chance of a passing grade. We've all heard about Greenspan, Bernanke, and now the Yellen put. It has been believed, and for good reason, 
the Fed would step in and save the stock market should it begin to buckle magically. So we're going to skip down to the silver information. Actually, I'm sorry, I think it was... Okay, I'm sorry. It was this one. Dear Seekers, don't push a bad position. This is good advice in many varied quests. It's a good advice in games like chess or poker. Good advice in sports, business, politics, geopolitics, and certainly in military ventures. Today, we will look at two separate issues, whether bad positions are being pushed to the wall. First, we have an insane situation brewing in Comex Silver. The open interest finally exceeded 200,000 contracts. That's 1 billion ounces. I believe the only other time this much open interest existed was back in 1980 or 1981. This makes no sense whatsoever. The price is again plumbing four-year lows, yet open interest has moved to record highs. The fact open interest has expanded while prices declined is proof positive. The initiation of this expanded open interest has been by shorts but absorbed by someone on the other side of the trade. Total global production of silver is only 800 million ounces or thereabouts, so COMEX shorts have contracted to deliver 25% more silver than will even be produced globally over the next 12 months. Silver available for COMEX delivery only totals 57 million ounces, so they sit on a naked short time bomb of more than 950 million ounces. If we look at the July silver contract, there are 55,000 contracts still open with only four days remaining before the first notice day. This is 275 million ounces still open with only 57 million ounces available to deliver. This is truly fraudulent sales of metal because the metal does not exist to deliver. Yes, I know the apologists will say this always happens and the shorts will decline in the first notice day and evaporate throughout the delivery month. I agree. This has always happened in the past, but something is changing now. In the past, total open interest always dropped and going into uh, that's first notice delivery day has now it is not. Not only are all July contracts closed out being rolled into September, the total is rising rather than declining sharply. I first wrote last August about the situation where huge open interest in the September contract dwarfed the available silver for delivery. My speculation then, as it is now, I believe somehow the bulk of the open interest in the nearby month is of Chinese origin. I call it a kill switch. Then, and still believe this to be the case, the shorts have had their way with silver, but I believe they are pushing a bad position. They're making price by contractually selling silver, which does not exist. The, this travesty was recently called out by Keith Newmeyer, CEO of First Majestic Silver Corporation. Bravo, and you are exactly correct. Then, of course, we must wonder of J.P. Morgan reportedly accumulating millions of ounces of silver. What of this? To finish this section, there is no market anywhere on the planet where the amounts of futures dwarf the physical product so overwhelmingly than in silver. Why is silver so important? Why has it been bludgeoned so badly and even priced below the cost of production? You must understand how small the silver market is. Total global production is less than $15 billion per year, but silver cannot be left alone because high silver prices do not jibe with low gold prices. And gold must be kept down and out of the limelight because high gold prices do not fit with low interest rates, which are an absolute must in an effort of reflation, I must say, uh, Low interest rates are an absolute must in an age of staggering deficits. You see, in no way can interest rates be allowed to rise with the amount of global debt outstanding. Higher interest rates will crush the debt outstanding. 
the silver market is at the very beginning of the food chain that keeps the lid on interest rates. Now that is a very important statement. I'm going to read that again. The silver market is at the very beginning of the food chain that keeps the lid on interest rates. I believe the Chinese hold this market in their back pocket, back pocket paid for with pocket change. They will use it at their own discretion. Now think about that, people. I pointed out the other day that it only takes $2 billion to buy up all the physical silver that is investment silver of one year. So that is just an infinitesimal amount of money. It, it's not only a rounding error, it's a rounding error of a rounding error. Silver is their Achilles heel. I think Bill Holter has just proved that. Something really big is going on in the silver market. We know that something really big is going on in Greece right now. Now, if you look at the charts, it doesn't show. It just shows a little bit of bounce here, and it would not surprise me at all to see the powers that be actually return things back down here. Let's do a last check of the euro, and we'll do a check of the yen, and then we'll check gold. And you can see that gold's made a decent breakout, but it would not surprise me to see gold actually end the day tomorrow down below here because this is it folks this is the end of their system uh, the what's happening in greece is going to happen in the rest of the world the situation in the united states is actually worse than it is in greece it's just because the united states controls the petrodollar and therefore controls interest rates controls all derivatives and, there, and has the ability to write itself a very, very low interest rate. But uh, what's happening in Greece right now is just a foreshadowing of what is going to happen in the rest of the world. You have to remember that Lindsey Williams warned and whatever stock you put into his sayings and his insider information, keep in mind that he warned that the euro is going to collapse. And after the euro collapses, you have exactly two weeks to get your money completely out of U.S. financial institutions. That includes all paper assets, whether it's 401ks, pensions, bank accounts, anything. You have two weeks after the euro collapses. That's what he said. I think there's a pretty good chance that he may be right. I'm already on the road to completing at least 90% of all those things. I highly suggest that uh, many of you do the same thing that I'm doing. We're still going to keep an eye on the silver deals, but now the heat is turned up and we're going to have to watch and see what comes from this Greek situation. It may spread very rapidly. It may spread over the course of a few months, but this could be the very beginning of a, of a serious downturn and a collapse in, in the derivatives and then an ultimate breakout of gold and silver. And we'll talk to you next time.